Hello. In today's introduction to XM42 control, I will show you how to reset the control into the initial factory configuration. This process will reset the users, passwords, and network addresses to default settings. This process will also enable internal web page function called first touch and allow us to log into the control and configure it by using any web browser. To initialize this reset, we need to push and hold SF2 button during power up of the control. We can use for that small screwdriver or pen. First, we should see lights dia 3 and dia 4 set permanently on. It will take a couple seconds and at that time control will boot into the initial stage. And after boot up is finished, those lights should start flashing and toggling. In the next step, we will use switch SF1 to select reset mode. In order to start total reset of the system, we must push the switch down three times. When we push it first time, D LED will light up. Second time, BT LED will come up. And the last time, ERR lights will come up. That means system is ready for complete reset to factory default settings. To activate this configuration, we need to push down and hold switch SF1 for at least three seconds and wait till all four red lights starts to flash. Once we see that, we need to switch SF1 again, this time up into the run position. That will save this configuration and initialize system reboot. It will take a couple seconds and we can see that the system was rebooted when the green E light turns on. Now we will set up communication to our laptop or system PC. And to do that, we'll plug our laptop cable to engineering port XF5. From this point on, we'll work with our laptop to continue configuration from the software side. Now we switch our view to laptop. And the first thing I always recommend to do is to verify proper connection. From control panel, I set my adapter setting properties and make sure my IP address is in the same subnet as my XM42 control. After reset, our control IP address is set to default value of 192.168.1.1. So our laptop IP address should be in the same range. After setting my adapter, I also verify it by using command IP config. And then I ping my control. If I get a proper response, I can go to the next step and communicate to the control. I will use web browser to log into control. It can be any browser, and in my case, I will use Firefox. I will simply call IP address of our control, HTTPS 192.168.1.1 and log in into Indra control first touch. During reset procedure, both username and password were also reset to default. And new username 
is Bosch Rexroth, and new password is also Bosch Rexroth. After login, a couple additional tabs will show up. Here we can verify hardware type and serial number of the control. Under Network tab, we can reconfigure IP address for our control, but right now let's leave it at default. Next, the very important step is firmware configuration. During reset, our control was set into initial mode with special initial firmware active. And non system firmware is installed. So we will use restore system function to install and activate latest system firmware. Firmware file is copied to laptop hard drive during software installation and it is located in Directory C, Program Files, Rexroth, Indirect Suite, MTX, XM42SW. We will select latest firmware, and right now we use version 15 v 6 and the file name is FWC XM42 MTX230603. Selected firmware should show up in selection window. And after clicking on the restore button, firmware file will be uploaded and restored. To activate new firmware, we need to reboot into system mode. It will take a couple seconds to reboot our control, so please be patient. We can watch LEDs at front of control to monitor the progress. After control reboots into system mode, there is no more access using web browser. So now we use our Interworks engineering software to finish configuration. This engineering software always remembers and opens project we worked on before. So we will start new project, use standard empty project template, and call it first start. In this new project, first, we need to add our control. We select it from standard library. And then drag and drop into the project. We can give control new name or leave default in drum motion MTX. We leave IP address to default setting 192.168.1.1 and leave all default interfaces. We can verify all our settings again by checking properties of control.
to verify proper connection to the control, we can use connection test function. After connection was established, the system will show us window with control properties. Here we can see description, part and serial numbers, and active firmware. We can also verify if the right firmware is active by using firmware management function. There is a very helpful function built in called MTX system status. Here you can see actual status of NC and PLC, diagnostics, and all additional device information. MTX system status screen allows us also to monitor control boot up progress. After restarting with control connected to our laptop, we can see all phases of startup routine. Phase P8, synchronization with circles, will take longer time because after reset, circles protocol is not configured and system will time out without establishing communication. After that, system will go to phase P0, normal operation. Last functions I want to show you require online connection to control. We can see that we are online when the control name changes color to blue. Now we can set date and time for a control. When we are online, we can also change IP address of control. We finished all typical steps to reset control. And now this control is ready to run your project. Thank you very much for attention.